resilience. I had overcame the struggle. I knew one day I would bubble. I had overcome my fear. Haha, <laughs> it was a sweat, not a tear. I have overcame my sadness and madness. Now I'm a beast, so I'm the baddest. I have overcame. I don't think the teacher should be at the front of the classroom. I think a good teacher stands back and lets students lead. I don't want to tell them, you can change the world. I want them to go through a series of experiences that make them realize, oh, I can change the world. Um, I don't want them to just parrot what I tell them. I want them to like feel it viscerally, experience it, feel success. Today we got to meet Chris, and Chris was an amazing speaker. I really loved listening to him, and his story was raw and real. I grew up in a really uh, violent neighborhood during a time when the crack epidemic was sweeping through the city. Lost a bunch of my friends before 17, I think about five friends. Two of them died in front of me. Um, Around this time, my brother was shot, uh, my cousin was shot, whether my cousin passed away, um, and I started carrying a gun. And um, people came after me one night a few months later, and I ended up taking a person's life. I miss your smile through the limbs. And I was sentenced to natural life in prison and just sent away. And I fell into a depression at first, um, but then I just went to my cell and just wrote up what I call like now my master plan. I turned my life around and it was through education um, and, and giving back and so helping other people. I became a mentor in prison, started a, a company, got my high school diploma, got my college degree in sociology. And after a while, after like a decade um, and being denied five times, the judge uh, decided that you know she wanted to consider giving me a second chance. For young people, like here's a person that looks like me that comes from where I come from, I'm gonna just, you know, maybe start my own company one day or just do something good. I just hope that like, you know, um, they listen and they, they do something with it. No one actually did that before, like kept it, kept it straight like that. <laughs> like you're staying in jail for the rest of your life, you're never getting out. But even though he got that sentence, he still worked in order to get out. He still made his grand master plan. Um, I'm gonna make my own master plan. Prototyping is learning by making. The sooner you can make your ideas tangible, the sooner you can find out their strengths and weaknesses and test and validate them in the real world. Teaching them how to make and produce has an important mindset shift of, oh, I don't have to be just a consumer, I can be a producer. A prototype is a way to make your idea tangible as quickly and as cheaply as possible. For Taz, that means writing up a mission vision statement, circulating around and getting feedback. That's a prototype. So Taz had a meeting at Under Armour that uh... Larry was able to set up with um, their philanthropy team um, about you know the, the, his idea of not only opening the rec center but about starting his program Youth Leading Youth and he was excited to go this is Under Armour headquarters before he left he said this is the biggest meeting I'm about to go to in my life it's been this wreck it's like a big wreck that was closed down about five years ago this is for section eight people and they said that it was a partner of the police and the mayor office and something happened between the two and they stopped funding it. I was thinking, well, if the wreck was open, probably wouldn't be as much crime or as dangerous to live in this neighborhood. I actually was starting to write a concept paper today, so I changed it into my vision statement. I'm going to get a copy. 
and that's my vision. I felt like they were telling me un false information. Who's that? Who doesn't care about The whoever owns it, Baltimore City, the government. Can we, can we walk around? Let's walk around. If Amber says that she's gonna give you a million bucks, right? She's gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a million for the wreck, she's gonna give you a million for the youth program. Mm -hmm. Hypothetical. I'm not right. quite there yet. Right. But if we do, what return, like what would we get back? Jam would be under armor, the bags, the trips and everything. So something that has to do with under armor. So okay. spreading your name more than what it is. So it's weak. She's gonna invest in your program. All right. She's gonna say, okay, how many kids do you think you could serve? How many do you think those kids grades would go up in school. Yeah. Some of those things would be some of the questions that you as an entrepreneur, as a leader, would probably be asked. Yeah. This is my vision statement. Thank you. Thank you. We talked about the community already, right? Really making sure the community has input, community gives feedback as to programs they want to be there, and to make sure that they have the ability to help and to volunteer. That last quote that he said, you're going to fail more than you succeed, but when you succeed, it's going to be just the bomb. That, that's going to stick with me forever. The whole conversation is going to stick to me. And when he came back in the afternoon, he had the guest badge on with Under Armour in his name, and he was literally dancing. He was literally just breaking it down and dancing around the room, talking about how awesome this meeting went, how it was supposed to be 15, 30 minutes, but he shared his vision, his passion, his story, and he captivated this team. And I hope it sticks with the other folks as well that they need to involve students and community members and people like Taz who really know these issues and feel for them in this process. The thing we cared most about is that students shared their learning journeys. I don't think any investor in the room is going to be like, boom, I'll give you a million dollars today based on their final products. But seeing a 16-year-old articulate what it was like to overcome struggles, to pitch an idea and be rejected, to build a second, third, tenth prototype, that's the kind of leader and entrepreneur that investors want to invest in. This season on Bet on Baltimore. For August 10th to be coming up, and that's like the day where we stop coming here. That doesn't mean that's the day when we stop working hard. They, not us, are going to fix our broken systems and cities. And I get to interact with amazing adults, but not quite as amazing.